high emotions still in the challenge house, Sheldon. <laughs> still exciting happenings. Let's introduce ourselves, though. I am John Chidley Hill. And as always, my name is Sheldon Alexander. And this is You Killed It, the podcast about the challenge back in Toronto, a.k.a. Hogtown, a.k.a. The Big Smoke, a.k.a. <laughs> the Six. <laughs> A.K.A. the center of the universe, A.K.A. Ooh. the dot. We can keep going. <laughs> A.K.A. Hollywood North. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. I could probably do more, but I feel like that's a good start. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. And apologies to Jesus and Mero in stealing their A.K.A. routine. It was a blatant ripoff. <laughs> it's paying homage, right? Homage. Yeah. The the what's the most what's the saying the most sincere form of flattery? Yes, something like that. Something like that. Imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. There we go. There we go. Speaking of imitation, uh, Josh and Polly <laughs> are sort of mirror images of each other to start this episode of War of the Worlds Two: <laughs> The Challenge. Rarely, John, do I get embarrassed while watching this show and like, writing <laughs> down notes. But I can't lie, I was kind of embarrassed with how many times I rewound that scene because I was taking notes and I wanted to break down in epic proportion the levels of disrespect of this argument. Okay? Okay. <laughs> break it down. I want to so, show your work. <laughs> I understand that Josh is mad. Right? Josh is mad yes. because Paulie shook his hand and said he wouldn't put in one of his teammates. And, you know, can Josh really be mad considering what he did to Wes? I don't know. That's a whole other level of conversation, right? Whatever. Who cares about that? For now, and when we just break down this moment in time, and Paulie and Josh are yelling at each other from across the room, which, okay, lame, whatever. But the thing that really got me here is the growing levels of disrespect. One, I love watching the people who are people watching, namely Bear does a fake bench reacts where he's just like, Josh yells something and, and Bear's sitting beside Polly and he goes, oh, <laughs> as if like Josh just said like the greatest diss ever. But really Bear just gets up to allow Josh to come across the room and now get into Polly's face who is sitting down. Now the part I really want to break down here is... Polly says, shut your mouth, right? And yeah. then the difference here, the thing that really caught my eye is the difference between the one-handed point and the two-handed point. Now, it might seem like a, not that big of a difference, but there is a major difference. The one, the one finger kind of could come off as like a scolding. Do you know what I mean? Like, you shouldn't yeah. do that, John. The two finger, you know, you might add a little accent on it for the levels of disrespect, <laughs> right? The two finger in the face, that's like a certain level. I know some people might think it's like the gun finger or whatever, which is a stretch. But I'm saying the two finger point that Paulie puts in Josh's face and says, I don't know who you think you're talking to. <laughs> that's like a one more like a, there was a is it the Cedric the Entertainer bit? Is it from Kings of Comedy where he's talking about the I wish a motherfucker would? <laughs> right. Yeah, that is Cedric the Entertainer. <laughs> That was a two finger. That's the two finger point right there that Polly gives Josh. That I was just like, whoa, like we're fighting. That's the yeah. level of fighting. The one finger I could tolerate. The two finger point. That we 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 got to have some stronger words. The two finger point, and they even like paused it for you and like changed the color of the video <laughs> to emphasize <laughs> the level of get out of here. You're not even in my face. But the thing I urge people to do. Just pay attention to everyone else watching this. Because Kyle is having a great time. CT is having a great time. Bear is in just the permanent, like, oh, like the like his mouth is open. <laughs> right? Just like taking it all in. I was way too amused by this. And mostly because I've been waiting for this. Because I've been here telling you guys, people who might not be familiar with Josh's work about Big Brother. This is what Josh did on Big Brother. Just like yelling starting fights pretending as if he was actually gonna fight but waiting for someone to like get in the middle and like hold them back and paulie we've seen his resume this isn't the first time we've seen paulie pull the hold me back with the security guards right 
Yes, but like you, I had a lot of thoughts. First of all, off the top, you made an excellent point about the two finger point. Mm-hmm. And as you were talking, I was I was trying both the one finger point and the <laughs> two finger point. I want Just people to, to be. Feel Hold on. I want people to be honest. How many people listening to the pod right now were going through and, and mimicking the one finger versus the two finger and realizing the levels of emphasis when you add that extra finger? I want I want people to tweet at us and be honest. Did you actually try the one versus two finger point? <laughs> yeah, I think I hope I hope our listeners are, you know, if they're not in public, because like, I wouldn't. <laughs> I would be throwing around two finger points out on the streets. On the subway. But like take, yeah, on the subway, whatever. In your car, like don't point if you're listening while you're commuting. Don't like start pointing out the window. No, like, no, no, no. You're going to get clapped up if you do that. But like, uh. I think you're right. You're totally right that like the two finger point is like, we're really going to fight. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the one finger point is sort of like an instinctive... Like, he sometimes you just point when you're talking, right? Yes. Like if you're yes. a hand talker, Polly mm-hmm. is of Italian descent. I don't want to rely on stereotypes, but they <laughs> might be hand talkers. Fair enough. And Fair enough. but the the two finger point, you're right. It's a it's an escalation. Ah, I also yes. have to say that Polly, yeah, Polly talks a lot about fighting. We talk like. <laughs> it's in his it's in his Twitter bio that he does Krav Maga. Okay. And he often tried quote unquote tried to fight Kyle. Kyle. Yeah. But this felt like he was really actually trying. Like both of them took several people to like really actually physically restrain them. Well, Josh like really only had one person fake. restraining him. Yes. That he had been Kurt his own Angle. Side. <laughs> he had the Kurt Angle wannabe trying to restrain uh... him. And Polly had a dried up biker trying to restrain him. Yes. It I was really. Just hilarious. As soon. Because, in all seriousness, the guy restraining Josh looks. We only saw in the back of his head. Looks so much like SmackDown era Kurt Angle with the, like. <laughs> Blue cut off muscle shirt, the yeah. thick neck, the shaved head. I was like, damn, Kurt Angle. Out there getting those paychecks, those security paychecks. <laughs> Keep getting them checks, as Jalen Rose oh. would say. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I love about this was Paulie in his confessional is like, uh, oh, Josh still doesn't understand that this isn't Big Brother. This is a challenge. It's like, bruh. You were also on Big Brother. Like, you said that as if it's such slander towards Josh when it's like you were on the exact same show. You know what I mean? Like, I just found but, that hilarious. I, but I agree with Polly because this is something you and I have talked about. That Josh is like Big Brother, I don't know how, but like in that house, they're very good at being able to wipe the slate like week to week. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a very much a that was then, this is now kind of thing. Whereas in the challenge, once you cross someone, you've crossed them for seasons. <laughs> like, this is going to be... Yes. That you, part is true. Uh, you are now enemies for years. In that some part cases, is true. decades. Like, Johnny Bananas and Wes have been enemies for a, more than 10 years. Right? There are <laughs> children watching this show who have only known a world where Bananas and Wes hated each other. <laughs> right that's true that's very also, true also i want to give a shout out to josh who had those sweaty tears happening you know what i mean sweaty tears <laughs> where like his his cheek was damp and like there's a glisten but there wasn't it wasn't tear drops it's the that's sweaty fair. tears you know what it's i from mean wiping the tears as well it's from wiping the tears yeah but like without a kleenex like using the <laughs> using the back of your hand you know I got you. I got you. When you when you're explaining to your grade five teacher why you got into a fight, for sure over and some lunchables. Totally true. Totally true. And I gotta say, I, I have to agree with Nani here, who says, "Well, that was a bit extra." <laughs> <laughs> yes, <it was. laughs> to say the least, right? But what do you make of the conversation that followed with Bear, Theo, and Nani? And they're sitting there, kind of like they're on the side of Josh. 
right? They kind of coming to this conclusion that because there's no bananas, it sort of seems like Pauly is trying to take up that bananas role in terms of being the leader, calling the shots, kind of walking around with his chest out like I'm the man now, like I pulled the big move. I'm the big dog. Do you agree with that? Are you on team Josh in terms of this argument or are you just enjoying the ride? I am unbelievably on team Polly. Oh, okay. Okay. Be- because Polly's looking out for himself and Kara. Mhm. And this is like they they had to play the numbers game. Yeah. And Josh doesn't have a leg to stand on. He even said in confessional, he's like, I can't believe that Polly threw in... Maybe he was in conversation with Kyle. But he's like, oh, I can't believe that Polly threw in Johnny Bananas when we all agreed that we wouldn't put in anyone from our team. And then he goes, I know I put in Wes. Like, <laughs> yes, you put in Wes. Uh, like, this is on you, dog. <laughs> like, it's true. This is it's where true. it comes from. It's very true. Well... In an effort of making peace, Leroy, also talking about stepping up and taking charge, Leroy tries to call a team meeting, right? And he's trying to, first off, trying to get Josh and Polly to acknowledge the fact that you guys can squash this. You guys don't have to be best friends anymore, but we need you guys as a team to just get along. And we need to end this whole narrative about us throwing in our own team members. Let's all at least agree that we will stop throwing in our own team and at least go after the other team. Leroy's efforts here. Did you like Leroy's efforts? I loved it. I mean, well, <laughs> a caveat. I think that what Leroy was doing was really admirable. Mm-hmm. My concern is that oh. Leroy is making real life decisions oh. when this is the challenge. Oh, okay. Okay. Because what he's doing, like, if you, in your place of employment, if there had been a lot of fighting amongst your coworkers, No, there's never fighting at my work. No, mine, mine either. We all get along. But <laughs> yes. in theory, you know, you would, you would essentially say, like, hey, this is bullshit. Like, set your problems aside. Mm-hmm. And... Like, we all have to row in the same direction. Right? You don't have to be friends. You don't have to go for drinks afterwards. Just be respectful of each other yeah. in the workplace. Like, that, that is a real-life solution to a real-life problem. Unfortunately, yeah. this is the challenge house. And it ain't real life. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> like, I really admire Leroy. And, like, he is being a reasonable human being. And he mm-hmm. is speaking, he's being logical. And he's being sensible. And he's thinking with his head and not with his heart. However, in the long run, I don't know that this is going to work out for him. Like, in the long, long run, like, over the course of this season, I don't know that this is going to pan out for our man Leroy. Yeah. So this is kind of the overrunning theme of this episode. So I'll kind of get to my thoughts on Leroy's whole MO here. And as we kind of, you know, because this this theme obviously will come up again in this episode. Um, So I'll save my thoughts for a little later. But yeah, I got to give credit to Leroy here because he means well. And, you know, the other thing that comes out of this conversation, obviously, is that Nani is going to be the speaker and it's going to be Leroy and Ninja joining her in the tribunal. And, you know, it appears to be some unity here. And it comes down to the same thing it's come down to the past couple weeks is, okay, this is someone saying this is the plan. This is what we're going to do. But are they going to follow through with their word? So we'll, we, we got to see what happened. But we'll get I, I, there. Before we progress, I have to say, I find it so strange. It must be getting cut out. But I find it so strange that every time the tribunal is selected, no one ever makes noise about like the same gender that is up for elimination being on the tribunal, like one way or the other. Like you'd think that, oh, like, I see what you're saying, yeah, yeah. The tri- like, if it's a female elimination week, you'd think that when they like prearrange these tribunals, they'd be like, well, let's all have women, or like conversely, like. Or let's all have men because they're not up. You know what I mean? Like you think it at least 
there'd be some conversation one way or the other. No, for sure. That would definitely make sense. Um, speaking of it making sense... It must be sense, cut out. Because like, I can't imagine someone not being like, yo, yeah. like, why does Leroy have a say? No, that's or true. Or conversely, like, Nani and Ninja, why are you safe? You know what I mean? Like, there'd be... I don't know. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine it not coming up. Well, the other part, too, to remember is at this point, like, Cam's already been in, right? The U.S. team keeps winning. So, like, Cam's already yeah. been in. Kara's already been in. Ashley, has yeah. she already been in? Yeah. Right? So, it's kind of almost like process of elimination, right? It's really just Tori. Is she the only one no, that Tori's hasn't been, been in? in? Oh, okay. So, Tori's, yeah, maybe Tori's that's why there's in. no argument, right? Because, like, you know... Ninja and Nani are probably the only ones left that haven't been in the tribunal yet because the U.S. just keeps winning every single week when they actually try, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, the other thing here is we kind of like switch gears into the showman side of things, which I don't really want to spend that much time on. But it was kind of funny because Nani is listening to D talk about how she's in love with Rogan. And it was kind of oh. funny how Nani was just laying there, and I was writing down. I was like, "This is funny because Nani's kind of just looking at her, like, yep, been there, done that in this game, right?'" And then a confessional happens, and Nani basically says that exact same thing as I'm typing it out, <laughs> right? Just that, like, you get distracted sometimes, and you got to remember there's money on the line, right? Well, I'd go beyond that. Like, it's been like th- what three weeks. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't I think this is where we take our right turn into John gives love advice to our young listeners. Okay. Young <laughs> folks, you cannot fall in love with someone for real for real in 3 weeks. It's it's not real life. That cannot happen. This is not summer camp, guys. Like <laughs> Or it's, is it adult summer well, camp? It is adult summer camp. Camp no counselors. Um, but like, in all seriousness, it like what's going on is D is bored. Mm-hmm. There's nothing happening in the house except she's banging Rogan. It's a high pressure situation. They're not eating well. They're not sleeping well, right? And so she's just obsessing. Like she's, I'm sure she like. I'm sure he has many fine qualities, Mm -hmm. and I'm sure, like, there's an infatuation, but you're not in love, (laughs) right? And, like, she's taught, like, did you catch her say, like, I just don't know, like, we live on other sides of the world. Yeah, it's not going to last. Like, I don't want to be a cynical old man here. But, no, (laughs) your relationship formed in a reality TV house where you live in Australia and he lives in England, no, it's not going to work, D. (laughs) <laughs> because you're not actually in love. You're horny and bored. Well, the other part to this, right? And it's something that comes up on Big Brother all the time is people normally reference when they get involved in showmance is that even though it's been like a week, it's almost like you need to be, you know, grading this on a scale kind of because like a week in like a situation like this where you're spending 24 hours with the person is different than real life in which you know, you go to work for eight hours a day. You go to your separate house and sleep for maybe eight hours a day. So in a real relationship at the beginning, in real life, how many hours a day are you really spending together in a week as opposed to in the Big Brother house or in the Challenge house where you're literally around this person 24 hours a day? So three weeks isn't really three weeks, if you know what I'm saying. And hey, I don't know if that's true or not. I've never been on the show. Well, I'm just relaying information in terms of how it's been described on other reality shows. That There is a logic there. But still, like I said, it's like summer camp. <laughs> like, just because just cause it burns bright doesn't mean it burns hot. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you hope that there's nothing that's burning. But. <laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm playing, just saying. On that note, playing <laughs> spin the bottle with a hand sanitizer is the most apt metaphor for the challenge I've ever seen. So true. So true. Very so true. So they, as a, as I just described, they're playing spin the bottle with a hand sanitizer, mm-hmm. and uh, Kaylee spins it. It lands on bear. And Georgia gets visibly upset 
that mm-hmm. Bear sort of kisses Kaylee's boobs. Yeah, I didn't know what was going on there. Like, is that just a classic motorboat? Like, I didn't know what was going on. I was kind of confused by it, by the game they were playing. I didn't, I don't know. But yes, and that would be a know, way to describe it. Georgia is very smitten. She really likes Bear. Mm-hmm. But if she really watched it, like, Kaylee wanted no part of this. Like, Kaylee was not interested in that bear love smoke at all. Um, I also just think that part of this is on Georgia, right? And I've gone back and forth with this whole narrative of what I think Georgia is up to in terms of just making good TV, right? And so I think she's on to bear. She knows exactly what bear is. She, she gets it. She understands it. But she rolls with it because it's good tv so she's not i don't think she's really that hurt by bear or catching feelings as they would say but it makes for an interesting storyline that she looks so distraught she has to have her eyes closed and pretends like she doesn't see it and then storms off because they're grown-ass people playing spin the bottle (laughs) like come on right yeah uh, again i think it's the boredom of the house also true also true but it then leads to i mean if you're saying that was boredom them playing spin the bottle how bored then do you have to be to (laughs) then try to make him jealous by going to make out with josh well i like what (laughs) ct said where he goes fucking gross and he's right (laughs) that for that was the most awkward kiss i've ever seen on this show (laughs) up to and including when frank kissed zach on a dare like that was I don't even so... know if I remember that. But yes. Yeah. Oh no, I do remember that. I do remember that. Like that no sexual chemistry. And then Jenny's like, Oh my god, that was so hot. No, it wasn't. It I think was that might not... be further to your point though, of like how like if you're not hooking up and you're in this house for however long, right? Like maybe that did seem hot because it's been a while because <laughs> you've been cooped up in the house, right? I mean, I guess so. But, like, (laughs) it was gross. Right? Like, their lips weren't even connecting. Yeah, it it was... Yeah. I I got nothing there. They kissed... They kissed, like, around each other's mouths. If you're Josh, though, are you... I mean, I can't... I I feel bad asking the question, if you were Josh. (laughs) But I was just like, you know, I guess Josh is into it, because if you're him, you just got to get in where you fit in type thing. (laughs) Well, Is that mean? Is that mean? I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm trying to to understand his positioning in this, because, like, I'd be like, get away from me. I'm not... I'm not being a part of your, like, silly, you know, let's make Bear jealous, sloppy... You know, pity makeout session. You know, that's me. Yeah, well, but it, again, I'm not Josh. Well, but you know what? In fairness to Josh, everyone's first kiss is magical. So, <laughs> fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. I guess so. I guess so. Right. Um, let's get to the actual challenge event. Trivia. I know I you love, love your trivia. trivia, and this I love trivia. trivia. Did not disappoint. I also love the twist, which I know it sounds like I probably do this every week, but I love to shout out the producers because we've seen trivia challenges before, but I've been giving them a lot of credit for the the twists that they've been adding to these challenges. And this whole thing about how, you know, you're sitting across from someone and you're strapped into basically like what looks like an adult car seat. And if you answer incorrectly... (laughs) you get basically like blasted into the air (laughs) and like that just seemed crazy it was one of those things that first off it looked like it was hard to shoot right like to get a proper angle but it looked cool as fuck and also like terrifying it adds another level that we might not be able to understand just watching it on our couch how much nerves would be added to simplistic questions but hey that's what makes a challenge trivia contest so good, right? So the key yeah. here, John, the key here, John, that I really want to ask you is each team had to select six of their smartest players to go into said trivia challenge. Now, <laughs> I mean, that's 
that in <laughs> itself could be a, a challenge just to find an intelligent person on this show. Yeah. Like good I don't even want to say. I don't even. <laughs> What's Jordan say? The dum dums. The dum dums. I see. You and I always rag on people for not practicing swimming. <laughs> like, if you know, you and I always say, like, hey, if you know you're in the pool figuratively to be on the show, then you should get into the pool literally to be on the show. Like, put in those laps, you yeah. know? Yep. But also, these motherfuckers should read a newspaper, you know? <laughs> get one of those, like, fun fact books for the back of your toilet, you know? Like, just I, put in, put no, in I, that work. <laughs> I know what you're saying, but I kind of also go the other way in the sense that if you don't know some of these things by now, you're going to... There's you're no like, hope. Yeah, there's, there, there's no hope, right? Like, <laughs> you're not going to learn simple math now at this stage as a grown adult, right? <laughs> no matter how many uh, puzzles or whatever you try to do in your spare time. But the UK team of the smartest competitors on the UK team, apparently... Uh, Bear volunteers right away. You got Bear, Georgia, Theo, Rogan, D, and Nicole. I'm going to emphasize Nicole for obvious reasons. Okay. And then on the U.S. side, it's Tori, Ashley, Cam, Jordan, Zach, and Pauly. And right I, off the bat, I'm like, you got to go with the U.S. team here, right? Yeah, I do. I do feel like like looking at the lineups, the only two people who I was like, eh, maybe you should be in. Is I feel like Kyle and CT should probably have gone in for the Brits. I think that but, Kyle knows that he knows his strengths, and I don't think that trivia is one of Kyle's strengths. Oh, all right, all right. But like, certainly on the American team, I'm like, yes, Jordan, Pauly, Tori, like, definitely some of the smarter people on the team. Yeah, definitely. Um, so let's go through a couple of these because I thought I actually enjoyed a lot of these questions and thought it was funny. And I know you're the smart one of the podcast. You're the brains <laughs> of the podcast. So I'm going to assume that you didn't get any of these questions wrong, but it's kind of funny at the same time. Right. So I will. I'll cop. I didn't know the. No, no, no. We'll go through. We'll go, hold on. We'll, we'll go through. Okay. Let's go through. So right off the bat, <clears throat> Jordan versus Theo and Jordan's question is who invented the telephone? <laughs> right off the bat, for us, John, we were kind of laughing, right? Yeah. Because that's <laughs> that's a little Canadian history there. Hey. And I mean, for people who might not know, in Canada, the two major telecom companies, you know, in the States it's what? It's Verizon, AT and T, is that still a thing? Am I making yeah. that up? But anyways, yeah. in Canada it's basically Bell and Rogers. So Alexander Graham Bell, Bell, get it? Makes sense? No? Yeah, and also, he invented it in Canada. <laughs> so ah, it's da, da, in, da. in Brantford, Ontario. Shout out to Brantford, home of Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky, yes. See, we're, we're dropping Canadian knowledge here, right? We're trying to embrace race or race relations, no? Country sure. relations? I don't Country know. Country relations? Nationalism? Sure. Yes. <laughs> So Theo's question was the only continent with land in all four hemispheres. And Theo says it's Antarctica. <laughs> now, I, no, I have go on. to say, I would have said Antarctica, too, because it. Oh, OK. The problem is he's not thinking northern and southern hemisphere. But like if yes. it would be like the most equally split. Yes. So I would have gotten this wrong. In fairness to Theo. I also would have gotten this wrong, in fairness to Theo. But I do want to take a second to laugh at the fact of when he's like just dangling in there. He's dangling up in the, in the sky, and he's like, "Oh, my nuts really hurt." And TJ's just <laughs> simply like, "Yeah, sorry about your nuts." <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Odd fire today. TJ loves the trivia challenge, right? This is he where TJ it shines, so much. right? Uh, next up was uh, round two was Georgia versus Polly. And the simple question of spell the word alliance. But the highlight here, I think, was Georgia's attempt at distracting Polly, which was terrible <laughs> and obviously didn't work. And, I mean, spelling alliance. Like, if we're trying to go to a spelling bee, what level, like, what grade do you think you could spell the word alliance? Grade three, grade four? Yeah. 
for sure. Right? Like that was kind of that was kind of weak. Like if I'm the UK team, I'm kind of angry at that easy question. No. Yes, I did feel like the Americans got easier questions. Agreed. I, I gotta say, one of the easy questions the UK got though was to Georgia, and it was, "What is Tiger Woods's first name?" <laughs> and yes. She, and she says Oliver, <laughs> which was, I mean. I guess in theory, not a horrible guess. I, I, I mean, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me rewind. Not knowing his first name is pretty bad, but I'm saying because his name is Eldrick, like Oliver kind of is in the same ballpark as Eldrick. Do you know what I mean? In terms of like style of name? I don't know. Am I making sense here? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, yes. But what I loved <laughs> was that the Brits were like, it's a trick question. His <laughs> real first name is Tiger. No, it's Eldrick. And again, TJ's like, it's not a trick question. You guys are all idiots. <laughs> <laughs> so good. TJ on fire. Uh, Cam vs. Nicole was next, and it was, name the movie that has this quote, shut up, Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. I'm going to be honest yeah. with you, John. In the moment, I was like, uh, is that clueless? Oh, my but I just, God. No, but I had, the, I had the right style of movie. I just had the wrong era. That's all. That's all. Like, it was in my mind. Like, I knew what the right answer was. I just went to the same movie from the previous era, showing how old I am. Yes. Is that fair? Is That's it wrong fair. to call clueless the mean girls of the 90s? Yeah, Does that yeah I think that's fair. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what happened. Like, I could see it, and I was like, ah. Uh, but still, terrible on my part. I would have been wrong. Um, but I, I love how excited the U.S. team was when they asked the question. Like, they were literally, like, dancing around because it was so easy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then what was after that? Nicole's question here, right? They set us up. Right, they set us up knowing that something's good, something good is coming. Because you get a confessional from Georgia, which says that you know Nicole might be her best friend, but she's not exactly the brightest crayon in the crayon box, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Nicole is giving like this rambling kind of like you know she's not good at geography, she's not good at this, and I'm not sure because her accent comes off kind of thick. But did she say that she would? She, did she call herself clinically dumb? Yes, she did. So I knew something bad was coming, but I didn't expect this. Did you? How many seconds are in five minutes? Did I you write mean, down what Nicole's answer was? Yes. I mean, <laughs> I'll never forget. It was fifty. Fifty-six. She said. Did she say fifty-six? Oh my god. <laughs> That's even worse. And TJ's like, no, that's not even one minute. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, so bad. The bench reacts of like all the people I think was Kara. That's like, wait, what did she say? <laughs> I mean, the best part about that answer is I would be chirping her about that for the rest of her time on the show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Agree. She's like, hey, John, like when's breakfast gonna be ready i'll be like in 56 seconds <laughs> you know what i mean like you just yeah. any reference to time for the rest of my time on the show would be 56 seconds like oh when do the producers need us to be at the bus in 56 seconds do you, you know think that I mean? she do you think that she knows that there's 60 seconds in one minute clearly like but i'm clearly thinking not. like how could you not know that well I mean, proof's in the pudding. Nicole no, no, didn't. No. <laughs> no, I'm trying to like play this out, which doesn't really make sense because I can't put my mind into the idiocy of that statement, right? But I'm trying to think here. Did she misunderstand the question? Like, is it was she just like nervous being in the seat? Because like you have to know that there's 60 seconds in one minute. Like you have I mean, as a grown adult, you have to know that. No. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I, got, I can't honestly, even break it down. I don't know. There's no defending it. it. <laughs> there's, it's so bad. There's no defending it. Uh, let's move on. U.S. obviously winning three nothing. Tory versus Rogan. 
this one I would have gotten wrong. Tori was asked, how many hearts does an octopus have? Yeah, Did I you know the answer to that? I would have gotten no. it wrong. It was no, three, I right? Hate, uh, yes, it was three. I hate seafood. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I wouldn't. Yeah. I, there's no way I'd know. Okay, okay, fair enough. Uh, Rogan was asked, how many men have walked on the moon? I would have also yeah. gotten that one wrong as well. I would have fairness. guessed he had like the they gave three options right they said four eight or twelve yeah four is obviously the wrong answer correct and that's the answer he gave because <laughs> like the first moon landing was apollo 11 yeah and two men walked on the moon in that mission and then they had like six more missions to the moon where they actually landed because apollo 13 famously did not land so like but this is where I turn hop. to you. This is where I turn mm-hmm. to you and I ask you, and this we're judging a book by its cover here. I'm sorry. But I ask you, would you are you surprised that Rogan would not know that? No, I'm not surprised. <laughs> okay. He does not seem to me like an astronomy enthusiast. Not up <laughs> on the history of NASA. Um, <laughs> I liked Kyle's line here. I hope that Rogan's cord snaps. And it's now 13 men who've walked on the moon. <laughs> well played. Well played. Well played. We'll never know this, but if there's ever any of the challenge producers that listen to the pod, I'm going to bet you that a producer fed him that line because it was just too good. <laughs> oh. Do you know what I mean? Some of the one-liners are just too good. That's all I'm saying. Um, but anyways, the next question, I'm ashamed of myself for getting wrong. And I'm <gasps> admitting on this podcast wow. that... I know. Zach being asked the name of the dog on The Simpsons at first, and again, in the moment, like right away, I'm like, is the dog's name Happy? And I don't know what happened. Like, where did I get that from? I don't know. But like Santa's little helper, I'm ashamed of myself. I'm being honest. I feel like I'm in a, a, a circle of trust here with you, John, and the listeners of this podcast where I can <laughs> freely admit my mistakes and admit that I'm wrong and know how wrong I am. But I'm sorry, I did get that question wrong. And as a child of the 90s, as an 80s baby, I should be ashamed of myself. And I am. And I am. Do you, do you want an opportunity to redeem yourself? Oh, no. Are you going to try to put me on the spot right now with a, a Simpsons trivia question? Yeah. I don't know if I should agree to this. <laughs> Especially since I'm not the one that gets to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> but you know what? I feel like our listeners would be disappointed, and I don't want to disappoint the listeners anymore. So I accept your challenge, John. Okay. What is what is the Simpsons cat's name? The cat? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't know. Oh, my. It's... I don't know. It's um, Snowball. Snowball. No, no, I would never have gotten that. Technically, no. Snowball 5, because the cat keeps dying. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> that is I w- So, Zach explains <laughs> that his dad would not let him watch The Simpsons because his dad was worried that it would make him dumber. Which, <laughs> the irony is not lost on Zach. But also, The Simpsons actually has really clever literary references. Like, they True. actually, like, quote the great Gatsby and, like, have yeah, references yeah, yeah. to, like, Ayn Rand and, like, it's a very smart show. <coughs> but the thing is, so, I gotta be honest, too, like, my mom, when I was a kid, my mom would always be like, stop watching Bart Simpson. Like, she always just would refer to it as Bart Simpson in her heavy Trini accent. But <laughs> the thing, too, would be, like, She'd say, don't watch it, but I'd watch it anyways, right? Like, I would just do that. Like, it wasn't as strict as, like, you're not allowed to watch this show. I would kind of just watch it, and then she would, like, chirp me when I was watching it. But with that said, yeah, I'm an idiot just like Zach, and I would have been flying into the sky (laughs) as well. Uh, D's question of name all seven continents. This was, you know what? Her answer was so bad. It was. We were just, like, ragging on Nicole, but, like, this answer was arguably worse. Oh. (laughs) I mean, it's on par, for sure. I don't know if it's worse. Yeah, it's pretty bad, though. She said Russia. 
<laughs> and South Africa. <laughs> yeah, South Africa is ten times worse than Russia for sure. Um, yeah, What's there's no defense of that, but that's what I mean. Like, if you just don't know that at this point, do you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not yeah. studying. You know, you're not going on the challenge and studying what are the seven continents. You know, that's just not a thing that's happening. Yeah, uh, but as D says. By. As Dee says, she didn't pay attention in school because she was in the back kissing boys. That <laughs> might be foreshadowing for how her season goes. Ooh, Ooh. I agree with you. I agree with so, you. So I, w- I will say mm-hmm. what it reminds it reminded me of. I used to know a woman okay. who said that she thought Canadians were Americans because we live in North America. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't really have a response to that. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> should, we keep, should we keep going through the trivia? Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. The War of 1812. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty obvious, and especially because she only had to name one of the countries. Ashley did yes. get that right. I would have gotten Bear's question wrong about the most streamed artist ever. Yeah. I would have guessed I would have gotten that wrong. I would have guessed Bieber just because of Despacito. Yeah, I would have said Drake. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but I w- yeah, Ed I would Sheeran not have was the correct Ed answer. Sheeran. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would have done um, that wrong. We had a question on the theory of relativity. That's pretty obvious, right? I, yep. Well, I shouldn't say that because luckily Jordan was asked that question, right? <laughs> uh, Theo was asked the value of pi in two decimal points. 3.14. I honestly thought that Theo would have gotten that. I was kind of surprised. Yeah. I was surprised. Well, Can't lie. One of the things that kills me is that sometimes in like trivia questions, there's a hint as to what like what you're looking for. And okay. so TJ said within two decimal points, Theo said two. That's not two decimal points. <laughs> like he didn't even get the like format yeah. of the question correct. He just had no idea what pi was. I think. He, uh, yeah, that's got probably be it, right. He probably thought they meant two slices. Yeah, and then I think they're just trying to wrap it up because U.S. needed six to win, and Polly's question was spell cutthroat. Yeah, <laughs> um, and then Georgia was uh, named the artist whose real name is Peter Jean Fernandez, which I did not know, but I guessed. I did not know either. I did not know, but for some reason I guessed Bruno Mars and got it right. Wow. I, I don't know what made me even guess that. Like, I was just like, I was like, I don't know, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, and like, Bruno Mars? Like, I just guessed. Totally On, pulled that one out of my ass. Uh, I but I did not guess T-Pain. You. I did not guess no. T-Pain. <laughs> no. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, okay. how surprised are you <laughs> I know what you're that say. Polly is a Bruno Mars fan? You know what? To be honest, when, when uh, what's her name? When Kara started ta- mentioning, like, oh, of course he would know because this is one of his favorite artists, I was kind of like, you know what? I can kind of see Polly being a Bruno Mars fan just standing for the little guy (laughs) that's fair oh my god that didn't even occur to me (laughs) so in my head i was like yeah i could i could kind of see that i could see that (laughs) i just saw one of my cousins is quite short and someone posted on her facebook wall this morning um good morning to everyone who's under five four (laughs) <laughs> you need to love more because all you giraffes can just go back to eating your leaves. <laughs> uh, oh. What what I love is in confessional, Polly's like the man, the myth, the legend, Bruno Mars, <laughs> which is no one has ever called Bruno Mars a man, a myth, or a legend. I mean, Bruno Mars is a great artist, but it is a weird artist. Like, I, I can't really say I've heard many people stand for Bruno Mars like that. No. No, I'll give Polly credit. Like, I respect that, like, he is an unabashed fan. Like, I really yeah, yeah, yeah. respect that Polly has no shame. And he's just like, yeah, like, I fucks with the Mars man. But 
it's such a weird hill to die on. Like, yeah. it's so... It was funny. It was pretty funny. So, but as we know, the U.S. wins easily 6 nothing. Uh, TJ says... Wonder, it makes me wonder about the British and Australian education systems. Like, what's going on in the Commonwealth, Sheldon? Well, again, here's the thing, though, right? Because at this point, the people that they're bringing in on the U.K. team, for the most part, for the most part are clearly people of a certain lifestyle yeah if that makes sense do you know what i mean um these people are still like heavy partiers heavy you know like they don't they didn't really strike me as being the best students do you know if i had to guess what their report cards would have looked like but hey still i'm making excuses for basic questions that you know middle schoolers should know but yeah. <laughs> uh, we could kind of like, was there anything before we get to the actual tribunal whole session going down? Because I nah. thought that was kind of interesting how that went down in terms of, you know, they're trying to avoid fights because now it's been how many times of the UK team being in this uh, tribunal and they're trying to avoid arguing this time, but it still turns into an argument. <laughs> and. It's a split between Esther and Nicole. And they're going back and forth. And I got to say, I like Esther's argument, right? I like what Esther said here because she says, you know, I might not be good. I'm not trying to say that I'm the strongest player, but Nicole was in the game today and she wasn't good. And she cost the team. I didn't. I totally agree with Esther. Yeah, it's right? sound logic. It's very sound logic. And again, you had to volunteer to go into this, right? Yeah. That means homegirl volunteered to go into a trivia competition and then said there was 56 seconds in five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it's fair. It's a fair point. Although, that said, broadly speaking, I still feel like Nicole is better than Esther. See, I don't, I don't know about that. Because yeah. one the of the biggest is, things... It, Here's the thing, John, and you say this all the time about being on this show, The Challenge, and being on a team in The Challenge, and I think this is a very big life trait as well, is knowing your role and staying yeah. in your lane, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Esther's fair. not out here volunteering to go into this to rep the team, right? No. Whereas Nicole, for whatever reason, decides that she's going to go into this trivia challenge when clearly you don't strike me as a trivia person. Do you know what I mean? And I yeah. think you got to be given some credit for that, or there should be some backlash if you're Nicole. Yeah, I I agree with you. I guess part of the problem is I'm falling victim, like falling prey to the edits. Yeah, because we basically haven't seen Nicole. Like Nicole also true. is <laughs> that's true. Her her role is to like flesh out what's happening between Georgia and Bear. Yeah. So. But, like, when they've, they've focused on Esther more, and when they've focused on Esther, it's about how she's trash in competitions. Yeah, and how they're so, trying to help her, and she lets the team down, yeah. True. Yeah, so I'm just saying that, like, maybe we've missed Nicole shitting the bed, and, like, it just hasn't made the cut. For sure. No, that's totally fair. Totally fair. But they go to a vote, and were you surprised by the vote? I kind of was. I, but I, was I also, like, didn't that count the so numbers. Yeah, I hadn't done the math, but I was surprised with how close it was and that mm -hmm. it was close at all. Yeah. And CT actually said it earlier on where he's like, earlier on in the tribunal conversation, he said, there are two alliances in this, uh, in our team. There's the best friends and then there's the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend group. Yeah. And this was a win for the enemy of my enemy is my friend group. Yep. Right? Mm hmm So no, totally. I, he, he really nailed it. And it was funny. Like, when he said that, a bunch of the best friends got, like, really mad at him. But <laughs> ball don't right. lie. Like, he's yeah. right. And he's not in either one of, the, of, of those alliances. So, like, he's sort of in a position to know. No, totally. Totally, totally, totally. So Nicole loses a vote. She's obviously going in. And we get the conversation with the tribunal. And Leroy is being the voice of reason still. Nani, you know, 
the argument begins here, right? Where Ninja wants to put in Jenny because obviously Jenny's the stronger, the strongest player on the other side. Leroy wants to do whatever the team wants to do, and Nani is taking the familiar position of I don't want to piss off Jenny if she comes back into the game. And we can right here see the divide of what's going on in terms of you know the different sides of the story, right? Do you fall on which side of this do you fall on? I am with Leroy on this. And the problem with Nani's logic is that she's assuming that A, she can't just say to Jenny, Hey, Jenny, I think that you're a very good competitor and I like you as a person, but I'm scared of you as a competitor. Like, that's pretty like hard to argue with and also she's assuming that jenny a will be on the british side and the brits will ever win and they've shown no indication that they're going to win and b that jenny would be able to rally the troops to then throw in nani exactly like she's wait she's nani is essentially making the assumption that Jenny somehow is going to get two very difficult to achieve uh, conditions to be made. Like, I and I don't think Jenny can. And that's no disrespect to Jenny. It's just that the Brits suck. Like, yeah, they're just every a, competition. And yeah. like, I'm not sure that Jenny has that much political power. It's just asking for too many pieces to fall into place, right? Meaning, yeah. not only are you talking about them having to win not the next competition, but the competition after that. So a full ass week, right, in the challenge house, meaning another comp another elimination. So Jenny would have to win the elimination, then come back into the house. A whole full week would have to happen, meaning another win or loss by whatever team, but in her scenario, the UK would actually have to win, which they've only won when the US threw it. Is that correct? Yeah. So then they would have to win, not next week when it's a guy's elimination, but the following week after that? <laughs> like, that's so ridiculous. Like, Jenny, like, who knows what could happen? There could be a fight and someone could be eliminated. There could, the numbers could sway completely to your side of the house. Like, there's so many things that would have to happen for that scenario to occur two weeks from now of the UK winning, Jenny being in the speaker or being, you know, in the tribunal and then getting the rest of the team to agree to go after Nani? That makes no sense. Yeah. It seems far-fetched it, to me. It seems far-fetched. It's, you're fine. Like, don't worry about it. Yeah, thinking way too much. And I do, I agree with you. I side, I side with Leroy. Most importantly, because Leroy's the one that brought the whole house together trying to get them to be on the same side trying to say we're gonna go with what the majority of our team wants and what's best for our team and if he's gonna do the exact same thing that paulie did the exact same thing that josh did the exact same thing that laurel did like that doesn't make like that would be the dumbest move for leroy to possibly make yeah right like that it just wouldn't make sense but i also don't get why nani then volunteered Right, like yeah. the stipulations for you guys wanting to be in the tribunal was that you were gonna do what the team wanted to do. So now you win. It's almost like she's gonna do the Josh move. She's gonna do. Do you know what I mean? The Polly move. It was. It just made no sense to me. Well, I think what it boils down to is that she's scared. True. Like her best ally, Johnny Bananas, is out, and she's scared. And one of the big things that we've learned recently: scared money don't make no money. No. She's definitely playing scared. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, maybe Leroy feels like he's more popular in the house. I think it's yeah. significant that whenever we've seen Nani talking game in this, at least in this episode, mm -hmm. she's speaking to Brits. Yeah. Right? Like, there's that scene where she was talking about the Josh and Polly fight. Mm -hmm. She's talking to Theo and Bear. Yeah. After the tribunal, she's talking to CT. Earlier, we saw her in the washroom talking to the Nicole, Nicole, right? Like, she's only yeah. speaking to the Brits. The other thing, so too... So maybe she feels like she doesn't have a ton of allies. Well, the other thing, too, about Nani's argument, right? If you're so worried about Kara 
or Cam or whatever. If that's really who you're worried about, then throw them in. At least then I would fully understand your plan and what side you're on. But for you to be so worried about them and then save Jenny to put in Esther, like that doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. Doesn't make sense to me at all, that logic. But the logic that does make sense to me is a good old fashioned club seed. <laughs> and this I club mean, seed was at least more it was at least more of, you know, there were some people looked like they were dancing and having some fun at least. A little I'm just bit. A, I'm just offended by the term club. It's clearly just a bar. It's fair. It's fair. That they play loud music. You are correct, John. You are correct. Totally agree with that. Um, I will say the the fun aspect of it seemed to be a little upped, um, and I enjoy Kyle wanting Jordan and uh, Tori's couple goals. <laughs> like I thought yeah. that was pretty funny because we've seen Kyle kind of run rampant through the house, although he seems to be pretty calm this season so far, at least going by the edit, right? Like we haven't seen Kyle yeah. hook up this season, but no, his history tells a different story and it it was funny to kind of see a matured kyle that wants more than just the the one-nighters but yeah it is nice to see but they also in a weird way announced that they got engaged is that what happened yeah so i i couldn't tell if he was like no not yet or if it was him being like no we did but just not here right now yeah, I think he said, yes, we did, but not here in this shitty bar. Oh, okay, okay. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, my other question to you, though, do you think Kyle was saying the couple goals in terms of meeting on reality TV and figuring it out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think he <laughs> means in terms of <laughs> the partnership. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Nani and Ninja trying to sort out their whole debate here. Who cares? Because we get to find out what actually happens there, right? Yep. Uh, D and Georgia. <laughs> I thought this was kind of funny because, first off, I like how D said, we're friends and we're good. But Georgia's asking, do you really think Nicole is the worst player on our team or she's worse than Esther? And D's answer was perfect. Come on, Georgia. You know it's not about best or worst. It's all about numbers. And you could tell yeah. Georgia was kind of taken aback, like, oh, shit, she's right. But then flips it and tells D that she thinks Rogan doesn't care about her and says that Rogan told Nicole that he's basically going to forget about her when he goes back home. And this upsets D. And to be honest, I don't really care about this relationship at all. Like, I I really don't care. But I will say that, did you think that Georgia did a good job in trying to just create drama in the other side of the alliance? Yes. I think if that was her goal, mission accomplished, uh, it definitely, like really like sparked off some drama and like rattled D's cage and like D admitted in confessional that she's like very sensitive and vulnerable about her relationship with Rogan. Yeah. And she so, already like, has insecurities about it, right? Yeah. So like good for Georgia, I guess, for sniffing this out and like exploiting it. But, like, like you, I could barely pay attention to this part. Like, the, conver- <laughs> the conversation between Georgia and D almost lost me immediately. And then, like, Rogan comes over and Ninja's like, no, not now. You have to. And just, like, so much <laughs> drama. And just, it, may- it makes me feel old, Sheldon. But just, yeah. like, I am so past this kind of. No, anyone but you, Rogan. Like, she needs space. She needs space. <laughs> oh, my God. It's very much like either senior year of high school, first year of university, bar, drunken argument. Yeah. Give me space. I don't want to talk to you right now when you're like this. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just feel I have such a strong connection, but, like, he won't, he wouldn't hold my hand when we were walking to O'Grady's. Like, oh, my God. Uh, no to, thank you you gave your relationship advice to the kids earlier on yeah. in the pod i'm gonna share drop some knowledge on you kids i'm gonna tell you this very simply okay 
give up the whole does he really like me shtick because it doesn't matter. What matters most is what you think. And if you really like said person, then you make said moves. Yep. And don't worry so much about what the other person thinks because it's pretty obvious. The signs are there whether they care or not. It's just and are you, know you paying what? attention to them. I totally agree with you. And if you shoot your shot and you get rejected, well, guess what? Then you know. And then you move on with your life. Exactly. Shoot or shoot. Yeah. You just you shoot. Doesn't work out. You move on. Life exactly. goes on. On to the next. Exactly. And so I don't know if he likes me as much as I like it. Who cares? That's their problem if they don't like you as much, kids. Yeah. It is their problem. Because you got something to offer, whoever you are, dear listener. <laughs> and that, kids, was another moment of relationship advice <laughs> with John and Sheldon. Back <laughs> so to your regularly scheduled advice. program. <laughs> <laughs> so now, then hold on, there, hold on. And now back yeah. to your regularly regular. Why well, I can't talk. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. You killed it. The Challenge <laughs> Podcast. You killed it. So then the Americans have a team meeting, basically at Leroy's insistence, with yeah. Ninja being like, yeah, that's fair. This is what we agreed on. We were going to talk about it. And things got really heated between Nani and Cam. Yep. I really like C Cam. So I don't want this to be misconstrued as Cam hate. Okay. But her conversational style in these situations always escalates things. Because she's yeah. really good at getting in the last word. Mm -hmm. And she's really quick-witted. So, like, someone will say something that, like, sort of puts the period on it. But then she'll be like, well, but I never meant that. And just, like... <laughs> so, although I think Nani's in the wrong, I also think that Cam was making it worse. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? No, and for sure. I, I, agree with, I agree with Cam in this situation totally. Um... Nani's just wrong, but I, I do understand what you're saying, right? Because it comes down to a thing again where, you know, Nani did say she tried to say something that Cam didn't say, which was when you were in the tribunal, didn't you do what was best for you? Oh, no, sorry. She said it as a statement, right? As if it was a matter of fact, like when you were in there, you might have listened to what everyone else did, but then you did what you wanted to anyways, right? Yeah. And Cam was like, no, I did what the team wanted. <laughs> Right, and you're right it just makes it combative instead of just being like well actually you know what i mean it's about tone but yeah either way it kind of becomes apparent what was going to happen heading into said elimination or the proving ground and we get ninja voting for jenny nani votes for esther and it all came down to your man leroy and before he made a decision I said it, he has to pick Jenny because he was yeah. about the team unity. He was about turning things around. He was trying to make things right. He, and he picks himself, Jenny. He painted himself into a corner, but I think it's the right corner. Agreed. The, totally. The right. one thing that I would say is in my mind, Jenny's not the person that you vote in. Oh. I think okay. what they should have done was voted was Georgia. in Georgia. Because Georgia's an equally strong competitor mm -hmm. and vote like presumably like odds are Nicole's going home, right? Mm -hmm. So you're pissing off Georgia no matter what. Yes. So you might as and, well like And maybe Georgia's head might not have been in it and maybe she messes up. Yeah, exactly. Because she's going so, against her friend. So I agree with the idea that they should put in a strong person. I just think that the strong person should have been Georgia rather than uh, Jenny. And also, they witnessed that the Brits have the best friends alliance and the my enemy of my enemy is my friend alliance. Mm -hmm. And Georgia's part of the best friends alliance, right? Yes. With Theo, Kyle, Bear, uh, Nicole, formerly, and someone else. But if you vote like if you vote Georgia in you're guaranteed to cripple that alliance further yeah and you have to know that that makeshift alliance will be easier to deal with mm -hmm. right and it features like Esther and Idris like you you kind of want to nudge the power towards 
the weaker alliance on the Brits. Does that make sense? Totally. Totally does. I so, honestly think that this came down to them just wanting to actually see Jenny in action as well. Yes. And maybe, like me, they had a hard time telling Nicole and Jenny apart and wanted to simplify their lives. <laughs> It's like uh, Jenny looks like super size Nicole or what Nicole would look like if she worked out, if she yes. hit the gym for like two like, weeks. Yeah, like a, Not so two we're weeks, clear. two years. Two years. So we're clear. Like I can tell them apart from afar because Jenny's taller and more muscular, but like their faces are the same. Very They similar. clearly go to the same Botox place. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. So we get this crazy elimination. Was it called Trapped? Yep. Uh, you're basically It's like this huge glass tower, let's say. And at the very top of the said tower, there's a puzzle. And you have to scale your way down this tower. And there's a pit of balls, which you got to move around so you can see a puzzle at the bottom. And then climb your way up this glass tower to the top and put the puzzle pieces in the correct order. This is a hard challenge. This is a very hard challenge. It was and, uh, like as soon as they got to the bottom and like they're figuring out the puzzles, I'm like, wait a second, how do you get up? Like, what is the strategy? <laughs> yes. Yeah, this was hard. This is a hard challenge for sure. And, you know, one, you're right. You have to figure out how to get up and it takes a lot of stamina. But also that puzzle looked complicated. That didn't yeah. look like an easy puzzle. The, I think a significant thing is there's no way that you could do it in one shot. No. True. Like you, you are committed to going up and down at least twice. And that was a difference, right? Like Jenny was committed in terms of like, yes, I know I can make it up no matter how many times it takes me to do it. Whereas Nicole... She was clearly rattled, and she went up once and was like, I don't know how many times I can do it. And it wasn't the fact that she couldn't do it again. It was the fact that she knew, I probably have to do this like five more times. And that scared the shit out of her to the point where she almost quit, right? Which would have been so lame and super pathetic. Like, I know that she kind of did quit. Not really, but you know what I mean? Like, we knew she was going to win, and the edit probably made it look like she didn't really give up as much as she did if you know what i'm saying but yeah. if she just would have stood at the top and been like i'm done i can't do this that would have been the lamest shit ever so i'm I glad also, that at least they made it look like she gave it a go she gave it a real go f- before jenny won i also don't understand the thinking of like i can understand people who want to quit when it would be cuz it's like physically dangerous Mm-hmm. But this was not a physically dangerous competition. It was just like it'd be physically exhausting. Yeah. Even even if you like went down the tunnel down the shaft and couldn't get out, they could just open a panel for you, right? Mm-hmm. Once you've lost, like it's not it's not you're not gonna get hurt. Even if you like climb halfway up and fall down like the worst you're gonna do is bang off a plexiglass like it's not that bad no for sure um so and i thought what was interesting to me is that now if anything i think jenny has a bigger target on her back because not that she dominated it but she looked really competent like she did well in the puzzle she kept her head on her shoulders yeah it was a difficult like think about like how all the muscles you would have to engage in weird ways yeah to get up that right like you're using your arms your legs your back your core at various points of that climb like that would be rough yeah 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 no i i totally agree totally agree and and it's a great performance by jenny for sure and yeah i mean first split second i kind of thought Wait, if you're Jenny, would it be smart to just go to the U.S. team? Like, I did think of that for a split second. But she makes the decision to stay on Team UK. And, yeah, I mean, bye-bye, Nicole. 
can't really say that I'm that affected. But overall, I would say it was a solid. It was a solid episode because the whole like U.S. team drama appeared to at least be settled for one week, and then for we now. saw the next week on right. <laughs> Yeah. And the next week on looks lit. <laughs> yes, it does. It, I have to say, this was it was a solid episode, but it was by far the weakest episode of the season. Yeah, and I mean, that's going to happen if you just say that you went from Wes getting eliminated, Laurel getting eliminated, Johnny Bananas getting eliminated, to Nicole, someone we don't even know, right? Like, that's kind of, you know, okay, par for the course. Um, but yeah, I think that the the chaos of Team US the first few episodes, it was okay to see it kind of like chill out and just get to straight strategy, right? Like, what's the right strategy of this game? Because I still don't think that part's been really ironed out so far yet because, you know, it's the first time the UK team didn't try to throw in one of their strong players, right? Yeah. Like. The clear decision was to throw in one of their weak players, so that was a smart move yep. in terms of the overall gameplay. And from the U.S. side, they actually threw in one of the other team's strong players to shoot their shot and maybe take a chance that one of the strong players loses. So the yep. gameplay was sound for the first time in a couple weeks. And I it appreciate was. that as someone who's a fan of the gameplay. Before we get to our quotes of the episode and the MVP or LVP maybe you'll continue your streak of negativity <laughs> did you have a chance to watch the Dr. Phil trailer for Nelson and Angela um, it appeared on my timeline a few times and at first I didn't know what it was like the first time the video popped up I didn't really know what it was and I saw it for like maybe 10 seconds to see that it was Nelson and Angela on Dr. Phil. And then I stopped it and refused to watch it. <laughs> like, I want no parts of that. <laughs> like, come on. There's that zero is, interest in that. That is the most damning thing you could have said. Yeah. So I, I did watch it cause I'm a glutton for punishment. Yep. And in it, First of all, he pulls a DJ Envy and admits on a syndicated television show that he cheated on her. Okay. Second of all, <laughs> they've broken up something like 26 times. How do you even know that as a number? Like, that's so odd. Yeah. Like, like it's one thing you... for you to break up and make up a bunch of times, but to be keeping track is also just, like, I don't know what's more dumb. The fact that you've broken up and gotten back together that many times... Or the fact that you've counted and know the exact number. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And there's a scene in it where Angela storms off stage. Of course. And Dr. F and Dr. Phil goes, don't worry, she'll be back. There's no exit that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dr. Phil. Shouts to mean, Oprah. Just sitting back collecting checks off Dr. Phil for like decades now. And, and Dr. Oz. Yeah. Shouts to Oprah. Jeez. Yeah, shout outs to Oprah. I can co sign that. <laughs> um, I just don't, as, as my mom, who loves like reality shows like of the Dr. Phil, like Maury Povich, like that sort of show. Yeah. She always says, if anyone, if I ever get an invite to be on one of those shows, okay. I'm just going to move away. Like, I'm just going <laughs> to like quit on all my friends. <laughs> And move on with my life. Like, I'm just... I'm just out of there. <laughs> like... That's funny. Whoever, whoever, like, invited me on, I don't even want to find out. I just want to go. just want to start fresh. <laughs> well played. Well played. Um, so, what was your line of the episode? So, I'm tying in my line of the episode with my MVP of said episode. And because... I think this entire episode was about the, I think it was Cam that said this, but it was the Lee Unite, the, wow, I messed it up, the Lee United States of America. Huh. Because I think that that sums up the entire episode. The Lee United States of America. Leroy was the one that stepped up to the plate in all the chaos, 
of Bananas and Laurel and Wes and then your man's Josh and Polly, Leroy, who normally plays the background, who normally just gets pitted onto Johnny Bananas' side. And even when Johnny Bananas leaves, he still maintains the rep of Johnny Bananas. But Leroy steps up and says basically the opposite of what Bananas was saying the entire season. Because if you remember the whole season, Bananas has been saying, why do we keep trying to pretend as if we're all a team and we're not a team, we're separate. Whereas Leroy is coming out and saying, no, we got to play together. We got to forget everything that's happened. And we can't keep mentioning what's happened in the past because that's just going to lead to future arguments. Leroy brought the team together and executed the plan. And at least for one week, it worked. And after three weeks of chaos, that was a good job. And it was all done by Leroy. And I give him credit for that. Because he also maintained his friendship with Nani to the point where even though he didn't vote with her, Nani did say that she understood where Leroy was coming from. So Leroy, you're the big winner this week. You are the MVP. You killed it. I agree. I am in complete agreement. You know, a lot of people will say like, oh, like in the long run, this isn't going to work for him. He's not going to, um, you know, he won't be the winner. We don't know what the final looks like. Like we don't know if it's a team competition or not. Yeah. So we have no and, idea. And I would say right now on the American team, Leroy is probably the most respected guy on the team. Mhm. Is that fair to say? Certainly like throughout the episode, we saw people on the American team who don't like each other or don't trust each other or are on opposite sides of the house in agreement with Leroy and Leroy's leadership. Yeah, totally. Right? Like, we saw Cam, who has a long history of issues with Leroy, supporting him. We saw Ninja. We saw Jordan. We saw Tori. We saw Polly. And we saw Nani all agree with Leroy, or at least agree to disagree. Yeah, And that's a good spot to be in where you're, I mean, we were sort of criticizing Nani for trying to avoid pissing people off, but Leroy's not pissing anyone off. No. Leroy's earning their respect and, you know, the Brits aren't going to be mad at him either, it seems. I do wonder in the long run if he's going to have a target on his back as a popular player. Um, I wanted to say that my uh, quote of the week is it was not a verbal thing, but when Josh and Polly were having their pull apart, CT miming eating popcorn and drinking a uh, soft drink was <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, CT had good. a pretty funny episode. Like he had a lot of good quips. Like when he said that Josh and Georgia making out was fucking gross. Yeah, and after the tribunal, he and Nani are having a conversation. She goes, oh, my God, I have a headache. And he's like, every time, bro. <laughs> I just love that he calls Nani bro. <laughs> yeah, solid episode. I, I was entertained. I enjoyed it. So where can the good people find you on the Soch? Uh You can find me on Twitter at Shell Alexander and on Instagram at Sheldon Alexander. Um Look out for the podcast, like and subscribe, of course, on iTunes and SoundCloud and YouTube. Um, yeah, huge shouts to all the followers, wherever you're following, and the people that tweet at us every week. Really appreciate it. John, where can the people hit you up, man? They can find me on Twitter and Instagram at J. Chidley Hill. And I just wanted to give, a sh- you just reminded me, I wanted to give a shout out to Brett Bullet, who messaged both of us. Okay. through Instagram, who just had some really nice things to say oh, about us. Okay. No questions, but okay. uh, I really appreciate Brett's kind words. Thanks, Brett. Shouts. Appreciate you. Until next week, this was You Killed It. You Killed